A good morning, everybody, and welcome to this week's CLEI Center for Keratoconus KC video blog. We've discussed in past blogs collagen cross-linking and its use in keratoconus and our excitement that has been recently FDA approved. In fact, uh, recently published in the journal Ophthalmology uh, was the paper that I and my colleagues wrote on the United States multi-center clinical trial, which led to FDA approval. I suggest that you look at the journal Ophthalmology in the internet uh, for full details of this study, how it was performed, and the results. In the standard cross-linking procedure, as we had discussed in the past, the surface epithelial cells are first removed. The epithelial cells are similar to the tiles on the floor. We remove the cells in order to allow better penetration of riboflavin drops, which are then administered for 30 minutes. Uh, this is followed by UV exposure for 30 minutes, uh, during which time the cross-linking reaction occurs. Immediately after the procedure, a contact lens band-aid is placed. This is used in order to promote healing as well as comfort. Uh, the cells then need to grow in and cover the surface, and this surface healing uh, takes approximately five days, after which the contact lens band-aid is removed. In the transepithelial cross-linking procedure, or the epi-on technique, the treatment is similar, however, we do not remove the surface epithelial cells. Because those cells remain in place and don't need to replicate and heal, there are a few potential advantages to the standard cross-linking technique. First, there may be faster visual recovery and thus earlier return to contact lenses. Also, since there is less healing and less of an epithelial defect, the potential for infection and the potential for corneal haze may be somewhat less. However, there are disadvantages to the transepithelial technique. Most of these revolve around its relative efficacy compared to the standard technique. Number one, with the epithelium intact, it is more difficult to get complete riboflavin saturation into the cornea. Remember, the cornea absorbs riboflavin much like a sponge absorbs water. And when we have the epithelium still in place, riboflavin, a very large molecule, finds it more difficult to diffuse into the corneal depths. There are new formulations and ways that we can get around this to achieve good riboflavin uh, saturation, and these are things that are currently being investigated. Second, the epithelium itself can act as a mask absorbing some of the incoming ultraviolet light. This may attenuate ultraviolet light energy deeper in the cornea and make the treatment effect more superficial and less deep. Thirdly, Cross-linking requires oxygen in order to perform a complete cross-linking reaction. With the epithelium intact, oxygen diffusion may be more difficult, and thus we may not get as much of a cross-linking effect as with other techniques. And finally, Although there does appear to be less transient corneal haze formation with the Epion technique, it's not yet clear whether this haze is an unwanted side effect of cross-linking or really represents the cross-linking effect as can be seen when we look at the cornea with the microscope. So we've been looking into epion or transepithelial cross-linking in a single center study that we have been doing here at the CLI Center for Keratoconus. 
Uh, we have looked at 82 treatments thus far over the course of a year. And using the techniques of the study, we are able to adequately achieve good riboflavin saturation into the cornea, as you can see by the green within the cornea on the picture uh, on the right. The other images are what we call OCT images, before and after, uh, showing adequate riboflavin absorption. As in the standard cross-linking technique, we see a generalized improvement of the height of the keratoconic cone one year after epion cross-linking. It can't be directly compared to the results that we have with standard cross-linking techniques, but it does appear that, though effective, the results may be less robust using the epion approach. Now, a number of clinical trials are looking into new riboflavin formulations to improve uptake. Ways to adjust the ultraviolet power or adjust the ultraviolet dose to improve epi on results and also ways to facilitate oxygen diffusion. Uh, some studies have looked at pulsed on-off ultraviolet light to allow oxygen to diffuse into the cornea uh, during the actual treatment itself. So we certainly look forward to results of these number of clinical trials and the uh, evolution of cross-linking as time uh, goes on. Uh, certainly, uh, this will remain a, a question until further uh, clinical uh, trials and, and results uh, can be uh, undertaken uh, and, and reviewed. We look forward to seeing you next week on our video blog and wish you all a good week until we see you again.